When it comes to topics that are debated within the online self-improvement community, it's hard to find a topic that's more debated than how hot or cold your shower should be. In this video, I want to find out which is better, hot or cold showers. When should you take one? When should you take the other? Should you completely avoid one or the other? Or is lukewarm even better? Well, and let's just jump into it. Okay, when you're sick, I'm not gonna lie, you should not take cold showers, nor should you take steaming hot showers. They're like lukewarm to mildly hot showers. The reason this is is because the steam from the hot shower can help clear up your respiratory system, helping clear up your system from whatever you're being affected by. When it comes to sleep, hot showers are also slightly better since they deepen your sleep and naturally release hormones that help your body sleep better. However, staying in a hot shower for too long can help opposite these effects. So overall, if you're trying to do it for sleep, don't keep it too long. As well as after a workout, hot showers might improve recovery, although this is very debated. If you have high blood pressure, hot showers might also decrease your blood pressure. Although just like the last one, it depends on the person, although most of the time it leans more towards yes. Hot showers have also been shown to increase your mood by releasing endorphins throughout your body that help lighten your mood. Although this also has been seen with cold showers, so keep that in mind. As well as hot showers have also been shown to increase HGH, human growth hormone, which can help make you taller if you're still in that age of development, as well as it helps a lot with bones and muscles, especially post-workout. One of the most well-documented negative effects of hot showers is this effect on your fertility as well as your endocrine system, mostly in the case for men and to a lesser extent women. Let's mention along with this, they decrease your testosterone also in both men and women, but especially in men. Not to mention if you're pregnant, being in a hot shower for a long period of time can reduce blood flow to the baby, thereby hurting the baby pretty badly. Another very well-documented effect is this effect on your skin. Although lukewarm showers are very good for your skin, hot showers aren't. They decrease the natural oils your body produces on your skin, which causes your body to either overproduce them, which can cause acne, or underproduce them, which causes your skin to be very dry. Not to mention if it dries out your skin, it can inflame eczema. Not to mention hot showers can also be pretty bad for your hair. If you have a long hot shower especially, it destroys your hair follicles and pretty much causes you to slowly lose hair. It also can hurt your scalp by making it dry and itchy, which further hurts your hair. Assuming the cold shower isn't too cold, they actually really help your skin and your hair, unlike hot showers. Unlike hot showers that actually hurt your fertility, as I mentioned earlier, cold showers actually improve your fertility very well. When it comes to weight loss in cold showers, the jury is still out. Some say it helps a lot, some say it does nothing, and some say it actually negatively affects it. When it comes to building your discipline, cold showers actually help a lot. Hot showers don't really do anything because they feel good, which could be a benefit, why not only for discipline? Immediately when you start taking cold showers, they don't feel good, which is why it builds your discipline, because you're doing things that you don't like. Building off of the discipline aspect, cold showers have often been shown to improve the very misunderstood dopamine, serotonin, as well as norepinephrine. Building off of the aforementioned hormones, testosterone, some people it helps a lot, some people it doesn't really help very much, and for others, it's downright negative. However, for most people, it is positive. However, very interestingly, it's like a cold plunge. You pretty much get a bathtub, fill it with water, throw ice in it to make it very cold, and then get inside of it. it has been shown to increase testosterone by quite a bit. Not to mention cold showers also improve your mental health and your mood, especially with depression, which can reduce symptoms. However, for anxiety, the jury is again still out and depends on the person. Very confusingly, just like with hot showers, cold showers might improve sleep. Although the evidence is kind of all over the place, so I take it with a grain of salt and experiment yourself. When it comes to muscular hypertrophy, i.e. your muscles growing, it's actually pretty true. It isn't really good for muscular hypertrophy immediately after. However, about 24 hours after a workout, let's say you take a cold shower, it's actually pretty good. As well as if you're sick, they're also a bad idea, since it forces your immune system to fight both the infection that you have, as well as if it has to warm up your body. Overall, there aren't really that many negative effects of taking cold showers, because that's pretty much it. Overall, my recommendation is this. If you're sick, you should pretty much avoid cold showers, since it makes the illness worse. As well as post-workout recovery, you should also avoid cold showers, instead of opting for warm showers, but not hot showers. And overall, in general, I say you should avoid hot showers in their entirety. Overall, your shower should generally be in a colder or lukewarm section, with me personally leaning more towards a colder section. If you want to build up tolerance to cold showers, which quite frankly does take a bit, you pretty much just want to set up a cold shower, pretty much at the coldest setting inside your shower, and just hop in. 
and, and the more you hop in, they get longer, longer, and longer. Overall, I want to thank you for watching. This video did take a little bit because research took a while. But overall, yeah, thank you for watching. The leg day video, the at-home leg day video, it's not going to be out for quite a while. The tap water video should be out by the end of this month. I'm beginning research for it around now. The back hypertrophy video, I feel as if I don't know enough about that. So I'm probably going to wait a little bit to release that one, perhaps late July, early August. The facial exercises video. I'm going to turn that into a facial effects video on how to improve your facial attractiveness in general, which will be a quite longer video that should come out again mid-July to late July. Overall, the next two videos should be the ab slash six-pack video and then followed by a how to stay miserable video, which is pretty much an inverse of the summer video on how to pretty much waste your life. Anyway, thank you for watching. See you next time and bye. Check out my new favorite channel. It is so good. Oh my God. Look at it.